Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I thank the uh, panelists for their presence here today and for their testimony. Mr. Knife, uh, let me just begin with you. Um, I believe in your testimony, certainly in your written submission, you indicate that the Songwriter Equity Act and the Respect Act take us in the wrong direction, correct? Yes. Uh, and you indicate that these two uh, pieces of legislation seek to create a music licensing framework that cater to the unique interests of a limited group of stakeholders, correct? Correct. Now, the limited group of stakeholders that you refer to are songwriters, correct? Um, it's songwriters and their collectives and record labels and uh, performing artists and their collectives, yes. Okay. Now, in the music ecosystem that exists, you've got recording artists, correct? Yes. Publishers, true? Mm-hmm. Broadcasters? Right. You've got satellite radio, correct? Yes. Internet radio? Yep. Okay. And you've also uh, got songwriters, correct? Mm-hmm. Now, aren't songwriters fundamental to that music ecosystem that we just went over? Absolutely. Okay. So, legislation designed to provide them with fair compensation, that's not a tangential legislative joyride, correct? That is, that is an effort to deal with fair compensation for a group of individuals central to the music ecosystem. Isn't that correct? Uh, I disagree. I, I think it continues down the road of what Mr. Port now has complained about here, which is the kind of piecemeal approach to updating copyright as opposed to a holistic view of making sure that we have all of the concerns that, are, that have been expressed here today addressed comprehensively. Okay, but I think we would all perhaps agree that uh, a comprehensive approach, and I believe testimony has been rendered to that effect by a wide variety of people with different opinions, uh, is the preferred way to go. But we've got some inequities in the system, and I'm trying to get an understanding as to whether you believe there are actual inequities in the system. So songwriters are central to the music ecosystem. We can agree with that, correct? Yes. Now, are they currently compensated in a fair fashion? Uh, I Obviously, songwriters don't think they are, but I think there are a lot of issues attendant to that. As I testified to earlier, there are inefficiencies in the system where my member companies pay hundreds of millions of dollars, indeed probably over a billion dollars a year in royalties for various uses of musical works, yet we still hear complaints about songwriters at the end of that system not being compensated appropriately. Okay, I, I think, think that requires us to look at the entire system and not just an individual approach. Okay, I think there's reasonable evidence uh, on the record, uh, Congressman Collins referred to some of it, to indicate that songwriters are not fairly compensated under the current system. And perhaps the reason that occurs is because we are not operating in a free market context. True, Mr. O'Neill? Yes, I agree with that. Okay. Now, you indicated, Mr. Knife, that there are inefficiencies if we move to a free market context. Is that correct? No, I didn't say there were inefficiencies. What I said is that the, there is a large potential for inefficiencies. And what we have to do here, um, what this body should be trying to do, is striking a very, very delicate balance between the efficiencies that are necessary for large-scale music licensing versus um, the, the potential for market abuse by creating collectives that allow the negotiation of, for large bodies of works. So who, who could potentially abuse the system in the context of a free market? I'm struggling I, with understanding your position here in the context of the history of the republic, which is that a free market has led to innovation, creativity, prosperity, 200 plus years of record evidence in the United States of America that a free market system is not inefficient, it's efficient when properly regulated. Who is going to abuse the system in the context of a free market designed to provide songwriters with reasonable compensation? Well, I, I think we see that with the consent decrees. Um, we've heard a lot of talk here today about how the consent decrees are, are decades old and they haven't been updated, et cetera. Yet we have, a, we have a rate court decision that was rendered within this year, earlier this year, that seems to indicate that a lot of the behavior that the consent decrees were intended to 
oversee and to regulate uh, still occurs. So I think there are, there are opportunities for collectives to engage in anti-competitive behavior, and that's I, one of the things we have to look I think for. the perfect example of that, that is CSAC and its actions since 2008 in the television industry. If you well, take a close look at that, you will see that, that. I do not disagree with you, by the way, if there is truly a free market, that, that it will be efficient. And let me also uh, note, uh, and I know my time has run out, but in the context of anti-competitive behavior, right now we've got ASCAP, we've got BMI, and we've got CSAC, correct? And the Supreme Court or courts in this country have consistently stated if you've got three entities engaged, three entities, you do not have conditions for anti-competitive behavior to exist. And that is what exactly exists currently in the music industry if we were able to move uh, to a free market standard and I yield back. And Mr. Chairman, CSAC's not here to defend it.